Next on BYU Basketball with Mark Pope. Hello, Top 20. The Cougars on the rise in multiple national polls after a 6-0 start, including a Vegas showdown title, and doing so without some key stars in the lineup. What is the latest on the injury front as the Cougars work to remain perfect this season, plus a challenge fit for a true sneakerhead? And the number one concern for BYU hoops in Friday night's showdown with Fresno State. All next on BYU TV and ESPN Plus. Let's go. BYU basketball with Mark Pope, presented by Siegfried and Jensen, helping Utah families for over 30 years. Greetings, BYU basketball fans, and good evening. Wherever and however you're connected, great to have you with us in Studio C from BYU Broadcasting in Provo, Utah. I'm Spencer Linton and have the pleasure of hosting tonight. A shout out to Greg Rubel, who is traveling to the College Cup with BYU Women's Soccer. And good luck to the women as they pursue a national title in Cary, North Carolina. We are live and on demand via the BYU TV and BYU radio apps and on ESPN+. Plus. What a show tonight, including... A Thanksgiving Vegas victory times two. A cornucopia, if you will, of highlights to recap the Cougars' Vegas showdown triumphs. Let's not forget Coach Pope's insight on the Cougars' Friday night challenge when BYU takes on Fresno State at the home of the Utah Jazz. The film room tonight features the shot doctor, Trevin Nell. And don't forget our player guest, Smooth Jackson Robinson. He's generally soft-spoken, but his game is loud and we're going to put his legitimate sneakerhead skills to the test. How well does he know his high-end shoes? All of that, plus a little good old-fashioned Q&A. Now let us begin and welcome in a national champion, NBA Ironman, and the head basketball coach of the BYU Cougars. Give it up for Mark Pope. Good to see you. <laughs> Welcome. Great to have you here, man. I'm happy to be here. I'm happy you all are here. Yes. Great awesome. welcome for Coach Pope. Uh, here's what's on my mind, Coach, a showdown championship. So let's, before we have a gander back at the two victories in Las Vegas, get to what's on Coach there Pope's mind yes. in keeping with tradition. Yeah. I love this. <laughs> Doesn't that just want to make you want to take a deep breath? Just like, yeah. <sighs> yes. Just let it out. I love that. That is so fun. I need to get that on my We can arrange that. Phone. Every day morning when I walk in the office, if that just played, it would be so fantastic. <laughs> An automatic cue. What's on your mind, coach? I'm thinking about Thanksgiving. I'm thinking about, um, I'm thinking about President Nelson, his great talk from I think a year ago now, a year and a half ago, about gratitude. Um, we started something that I love so much on our team. So every two or three days, we'll finish practice with a gratitude circle oh. where we all put our arms around each other in a big circle and have the whole entire, everybody, managers, support staff, every player, coaches, and we will, someone will kick it off and then we play tag for five or six people just talking about what we're grateful for. And I think it's magic. I actually think it is the best thing going. Um, and this statement has been repeated oft, but um, that you cannot be more happy than you are grateful. Mm. I think it's brilliant. And I think our guys are feeling a ton of gratitude right now and in honor of Thanksgiving um, and our team. I'd like for us to just make a big circle right now and say what we're thankful for. I'm not going to do that. Right <laughs> but Everybody Leanne, gather Leanne, around. Leanne actually wanted to stand up. And did you want to stand up and say what you were grateful for? No. Oh, no. No. <laughs> I am grateful for forgiveness. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to put your wife on the spot. <laughs> Jay? Oh. No. Okay. okay. You tried. Anyway, I love it. I mean, man, we have so much to be grateful for. It's just, it's incredible. And if we spend more time in a, in a, in a grateful spot um, with all the chaos that is in the world every day, and certainly in the dynamic nature of sports, it sure is yes. good for your soul. Well said. And frankly, uh, I was super grateful for the fact that after the chaos of Thanksgiving in yeah. my house with 20 plus individuals, 
that it quieted down a little bit yes. and I could settle in to watch some BYU basketball yes. at 10 p.m. Mountain Time and just what a great way to end Thanksgiving. Day. No, I, I kid you not. Like I, I, I think for Cougar Nation, it's so fun to have all the food and all the chaos and all the energy and then just have, you could just stop. Nobody has to talk to each other. You've already done that for the last six hours, <laughs> right? You can just lay on the couch and kind of go in and out of like a, a you know, carbs coma. Yes. And watch the game. We should do this every single year. <laughs> I love it. It's so good. All right, mark it down. And then the same thing on Black Friday. You go out, fight in the lines, go do your Christmas shop and come home, kick off your shoes, turn on the fire, watch the Cougs win a game. I love it. Part of one of the most epic Fridays in yeah. recent memory of BYU yeah. sports with yes. the women's soccer yeah, team pulling gosh. off that remarkable what? comeback. And then a little bit later, BYU wins the Vegas yeah. showdown. So great. So again, those are what are on my mind. In fact, let's take a specific look back on the last two victories and tonight's highlights and stats proudly presented by Intermountain Health. That was start. An amazing transition. Thank Did you. you see how, like, what a pro. I just want to come back at some point. That's okay, incredible. Coach? Uh, let's start with Noah Waterman's made three-point jumper, yeah. and he's done that a lot. Incredible surge yeah. from him. Coach, what, what's been the difference for Noah in the three-point shooting? You know, season? coming into this game, Arizona State had been one of the top defensive teams in the country. They're really, really long. They're really, really active. And, and, and we were a little bit stuck in the first half. Fortunately, our defense was carrying the day. And then Noah broke it open. He had, a, he had a couple huge threes in the first half that were tough and contested. There's one of them. Kind of got us going. And um, then in the second half, kind of everybody jumped in. But he was, he was unbelievable. He was great in making shots. He was even better on the defensive end. He was so spectacular on the defensive end and on the glass all weekend. So physical. Yeah. Trevin Nell, you want to talk about a nice addition of sorts to the team this year? Yeah. In transition and right that's there. A, that's the second possession of the, of the, of the second half. And, and it was just like the guys came out firing. And um, it, it was actually really fun. I thought, I thought um, you know, we handled the pressure way better in the second half. It kind of broke things open. And, and uh, the guys kept, kept the pedal to the metal. Now, Arizona State opted to press for a lot of the second half, and it did not work out well for them yeah. because your three-point shooters were hitting in stride. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, Arizona State is super aggressive on the front line of their press, uh, uncharacteristically so, and so they put so much pressure on the front end. If you can, if you can somehow get past that front line, it's easy pickings from the three-point line. Most sure. teams don't actually like that shot in transition, um, but we love it. Uh, we would attack that way all day long and kind of live with the, the outcome, and the guy certainly did. When you're watching highlights from the Friday night game against NC State, slower start. You hadn't really been in this situation all season. How yeah. were you able to overcome the slow start? Yeah, you see those scores, 18-7, 22-15, 32-24. Um, we were a little shaky. We were a little too – I felt like we respected their press a little bit too much. Um, I feel like our guys, you know, as, as the game wore on, the guys became more and more comfortable, and that's going to be a, a growing process for us um, in the backcourt, especially dealing with uh, pressure. But I thought, the, you know, we had nine turnovers in the first 11 minutes of the game, and we had none in the, in the next nine. Wild. And, um, and, and then we're really solid throughout the game, and, and um, it's just the guys growing and hanging in there and moving on to the next play. It was a huge shot by Spence. Oh, man. That was a huge shot by Spence. We were kind of stuck in the possession. He just said, I'll take this on myself. And how about this from Trey yeah. Stewart right here? You want to talk about huge shots. And we had been banging around three points, five points, one point, three points, one po point, three points, and then Trey finally got that one in the corner to go down in transition, got us over the hump, and then the guys never looked back. What's gone into Trey Stewart's emergence and yeah. his confidence growing? It's been really, it's been really fun to watch, hasn't it? He he brings something really unique to our team on the court, in the locker room, in the community. Um, but it's been fun to watch his confidence grow as he's become more focused on doing the things that he does great. Because the things he does great are really special for us. They're really important. In fact, in this North Carolina State game, we were struggling against the press and subbed in Trey before the first media timeout, and he he really helped us get down and kind of get our mojo back. Certainly he brings an energy to the floor that is palpable. You out-rebound the Wolfpack by 11. This is a common theme yeah, for your team yeah. against whoever the opponent has been this season. Yeah, it's really important. That's kind of our tandem attack is, is we're going to play 27-50. Uh, we're going to use more of the floor than any team we face. That's our goal. And then we're going to, we're going to, our safety net is that we're going to just be voracious on the glass. We're going to the glass hard on every single possession. Hopefully we get a lot of four on twos and four on threes on the offensive glass and we can win those numbers games. You've probably already answered this in part, but what do you feel like was the best thing your team as a whole 
goal accomplished in the Vegas showdown experience? Yeah, I, I, the thing that I'm most excited about with our guys is just seeing that they can move on to the next play. Um, you know, Arizona State, we're, it was kind of stuck. It was kind of stuck. I think it was 12 to 9 forever. It seemed like 12 to 7, 12 to 9. We weren't scoring great in the first half. And the guys just kept moving on to the next play. Didn't carry any frustration or baggage from one play to the next. And then certainly in the beginning of North Carolina State, uh, things looked shaky. A lot of Cougar fans turned off their TV after nine minutes. We're like, I'm not watching this anymore. <laughs> um, but our guys didn't. Our guys kept fighting and, and just kept moving on. Like they kept moving on to the next play. And, with what we're going to face this year, that is going to be vitally important for us to be able to just quickly move on to the next play, move on to the next game, and, and keep our confidence and keep fighting. A 6-0 and start for BYU into the top 20, number 19 right now in the Associated Press poll, and we're not even to December. Pretty wild, fast start for BYU. And frankly, you've done it without some – guys that you expect to play yeah. key roles. Yeah. There have been injuries, and, and I know everyone's wondering, okay, what's the status with Fus Traore, yeah. and, and when's he going to get back? So let, let's start there. You're winning games, testing your depth early. Yeah. What's Fus's trajectory of getting back in the lineup? Yeah, Fus has got a hamstring right now that is going to – it's kind of a day-to-day -day thing. Um, we're treating him like crazy. Um, he's got some special medical attention on it, and we're hoping to get him back as soon as possible. But – you know, hamstrings and groins, they're just, they're just, um, they kind of do what they do. And so um, we're hoping to get him back soon, but we'll just kind of see. Ali Khalifa, I, I can't get over, like, the role he plays How much you guys in love Las Ali? Vegas. You guys love Ali? <laughs> in a few weeks and it's like hey we need you big guy and he goes in he's dropping dimes the guys couldn't say enough nice yeah. things about him but what an impact he made in an unexpected role yeah we, we you know we, we we had not planned to use him over the weekend um because he's we're trying to be really conservative and bringing him back and and Right now, uh, through some testing, uh, he's got some really Im imbalanced leg strength, right to left leg, and, and he's, he's had a chronic knee issue that we're trying to get him past so that it never becomes an issue again. But we had to throw him into, into service uh, last second. I mean, really, genuinely, um, knowing that Atiku was out, we were thinking maybe we'd play him five or 10 minutes and, and, and get Foose 30. And then five minutes of the game, uh, Foos decided that he was going to take a vacation. <laughs> and, and so then Ollie ended up playing 27. And that's an incredible credit to um, Michael Davey, who will be on the show at some point, who is probably the best uh, – Basketball strength coach in the country at every level. He came Noah to Waterman us. called him Wiz earlier yeah, on the Wiz. Sports. He's the Wizard. Wiz is his name. Yeah, he's been with Giannis for the last seven years uh, as the Milwaukee Bucks strength coach, and and uh, Giannis started calling him Wiz Kid, and I actually went out there to see him um, when we were trying to recruit him to come here and work at BYU, and and uh, was in the weight room and referred to him as Michael, and and one of the people in the weight room was like, nah, man, that's Wiz. You gotta call him Wiz. If it's good enough for Giannis, I guess it's good enough for us. <laughs> and But but um, the fact that Ali, even though he hasn't been on the court hardly at all in live play, but he was in good enough condition uh, to make it up and down the court for 27 minutes is real credit to him and the work he's put in off the court and, and, and to Wiz also. Great stuff thus far on BYU Basketball with Mark Pope. Now, the Cougars have largely the same squad they had last season, save a few new additions like Ali Khalifa. One of those additions doesn't really qualify as new. Enter Trevin Nell, who primarily sat out last season. This year, the now healthy shot doctor is producing some impressive numbers. And for that, we isolate him in the film room with Jerem Jordan. Trevin, 6-0 and and ranked number 19. Are you kidding me? How are you feeling about this so far? I mean, we're super pumped. Uh, it just shows that all of our hard work in the summer and, you know, in the spring and even, you know, going through, like, our training camps throughout the year has really started to pay off. And, like, like I said before in, like, a couple interviews, like, this team is super special. And I'm, I'm really excited for, like, the whole Cougar fans, Cougar Nation, the whole world to see, like, how special this group of guys really are. So Arizona State... You guys were knocking down threes like crazy, and on this first one, Dallin Hall finds you in transition, and you're ready to go. So this play is like right before, like second half just starts, like a minute 30 in, and Dallin Hall gets the, the outlet, and I'm like, I'm just gonna sprint the floor. Um, and before that, in the first half, like I, I don't think I made a three, I think I was over or something, over two or something like that. And I remember Melvin Goins, our GA, comes up to me and goes, you need this much space. That's all you need mm. to get the ball off. And like that would just gave me like, a boost of confidence. So Dallin right here throws it up to me, a 70-foot pass, 
and I was able to just catch and shoot because of what Melvin said. And so just that much space really kind of helps me like get in that zone. And you know, Dallin's an amazing point guard and is able to throw a 70 foot pass. Like how many point guards out there can throw a pass right on target, right in my hands, where I don't even have to dip, don't even have to do anything, it's just perfect, so. It was in the down. pocket and I loved your footwork here. The, the pitter patter to, to get in, into <laughs> if, position, right? If you ask some of the team, like, I'll have floaters where I'll stutter a little bit or even like shooting the ball, I'll stutter just to get my feet really right. Um, but some of the teammates will make fun of me a little bit. But, you know, if it goes in, it goes in, right? A shooter knows his footwork. Yeah, a shooter knows you know his footwork. You know what I mean? Okay. <laughs> this is not the same play, but it looks like it. Noah Waterman is going to get the ball and then find you in transition as well. But you have a pump fake here, and I love a tiki. <laughs> who knows it's going in before anybody else. Yeah, let's watch, let's watch this one. So we have Noah, Noah's playing the point guard. I was able to get the guy in the air, quick stutter step and look at it, Tiki. <laughs> <laughs> he knew, man. Uh, T, Tiki's awesome, he's a great teammate. Um, but even like in this game, Noah comes up to me out of a timeout and goes, hey, if one of us gets in the middle, look cross court and we'll hit each other. Mm. And so literally like the play before I did it to him and then the very next play he does it to me. So. Like we have a really cool dynamic on the team. Like even look at Dallin, he's yelling at Noah for a great pass and Noah's under the rim trying to rebound. Like we, we do all I the little things. I don't know why, but. I, I know, really though. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but Noah does all the little things and that's yeah. why he was MVP in the tournament. Yep. Okay, NC State, the next time. NC State. Ali Khalifa, we know, we know is an amazing passer. We're seeing it now. Yes. This is incredible. And credit to Ali, like he hasn't played in the game in a couple games now and he comes in and plays almost 30 minutes. And like, this is what makes him special. Watch this. Like he can read it so well and then just throw a little quick little touch pass and and he's he's running back with his hands up and literally the very next play. Watch, watch, me and him make the biggest eye contact and he's throwing it from the three point line and it's a laser right to the hands. Like credit to Ali, credit to the bench. Like our bench is super special. Everybody's standing up, everybody's really excited. So. Like that's what makes our team super dynamic. It's just not the guys on the floor, it's everybody in the in the gym. We got Cougar fans standing up, like that's what makes it special. Is it best to hit a three in front of your own bench? Or the <laughs> other or the other bench? Um, I like it in front of my bench because I feel like we like it's just super fun. Like everybody on the bench is screaming at me and stuff like that. But every once in a while it's fun to hit on the other side of the bench, kinda like make sure like they know we're here and kinda quiet their little noise down there. So it's awesome. Okay, Fresno State in the Delta Center on uh, Friday to try and get to 7-0. Are you going to be tempted to shoot NBA threes since that line will be out there? <laughs> well, the fact that the line just keeps moving back, I feel like, is is kind of helpful. But uh, we put the line in for practice just to make sure, like, we know where the college line is. Um, but at the end of the day, like, a shooter knows where his feet are at, and everybody, I trust everybody on the team to shoot exactly how they've been shooting. Um, and I just hope Cougar fans can bring the noise again. Like, we travel to Vegas, let's travel a little bit up north, and. Get the crowd rocking in the Delta Center. Let's go, baby. Okay, thanks for the time, Trevor. Yeah, good luck, Jeremy. The shot doctor, Trevin Nell. Man, it's good to have him back. Yeah, it's really good. You know, he has such an impact on our whole team. You know, he, he, he is, I, I don't know if we've had a guy like him. I mean, the closest to him has been Alex Barcelo, who comes in. We track every single shot, every single practice. Um, so we're going to have the whole team shooting right now with the technology we have. We have a giant video board in the annex. And literally, as we're doing shooting workouts at four different baskets, every single guy's um, numbers will be registering in real time. So it shows their stat line in real time. And, um, uh, you know, I, I don't know if I've ever seen a guy like it. Like, every, maybe Jake Toulson is close, uh, but Trev is like 75, 78, 82, 84 every single day. Yeah. And it is um, remarkable, and, he, and he, it changes how everybody feels. You know, when you have somebody like Trevin, you know at some point those balls are going to go through the net, and it just when it's not just him that's seeing it, it's the whole team, and, and I think he has a residual effect, and he's so dangerous. Like his gravity, uh, we've talked about this before, but in the NBA now, they're measuring a player's gravity, literally like the sun. So Kevin Durant is one of the highest gravity quotients in the league, which means when he has the ball, you actually measure every second he's on the court, and when he has the ball, the whole defense is shifted towards him away from their men. And you actually measure it. It's actually a measurable number now with the camera work that they do. And Trevin, as dangerous as he is, he exerts some real gravity on the floor and makes the game uh, that much easier for the rest of us. There are metrics, and then there's gravity yes, quotient. Yes, yes. That is next it's super level. Cool. Yeah. That is very cool. I watched Trevin take 100 threes over the summer when we were doing a story on yep. the shot tracker, and he went 81 for 100, yep. and he's like, yeah. Yeah. Like, Which is the same every day. Yeah. 
81 out of 100? Okay. You know what's interesting about Trevin is his feet. You know, he's talking about his feet. You're talking about a little pitter-patter of his feet. He works so hard on his feet. I actually played with Reggie Miller, one of the great shooters of all time to play in the NBA. He was the all-time leading three-point shooter in, in, the, in the NBA before Ray Allen, before Steph. And, um, and he was so meticulous about his feet. Reggie could be racing off a screen, could be totally off balance, could be leaning forward, leaning back, but his feet, he was going to work them early. And Trev actually worked so hard to shoot exactly the same steps into his shot every time. And it's part of the reason why he's one of the great shooters in the country. Let's go. Hashtag gravity quotient <laughs> as we head to break. A reminder that your day to day You have a huge gravity quotient. Did you know that? <laughs> no, literally. Do you, do you not find yourself just drawn to Spence? Like, you know, wherever he is, people just gather. It's incredible. I appreciate that. Hey, you can always join me and Jerem Jordan on BYU Sports Nation, your day-to-day -day BYU Sports play-by-play -play weekdays, noon Eastern on BYU TV and BYU Radio. After the break, it's time that we bring in the sneakerhead superstar, the pride of Ada, Oklahoma. Jackson Robinson joins us next as we continue with more on BYU Basketball with Mark Pope. BYU Basketball with Mark Pope is presented by Siegfried & Jensen, helping Utah families for over 30 years, and Intermountain Health, official medical provider for BYU Athletics. Welcome back to BYU Basketball with Mark Pope on the final night of November. Tonight's player guest is, if you ask any of his teammates, the guy who has clearly taken his game to another level in the last year. The swaggy, sneakerhead, sharp shooter from Ada, Oklahoma, and a leader for the Cougars. Give it up for Jackson Robinson. How's it going? Welcome, Jax. How's it going? Coach. Go, baby. Have fun. Is this my show? Yes, it is. Right. Take a seat, my center, friend. Man. <laughs> and welcome to the show. How's it going? Good to have you here. How you feeling after a successful trip to Las Vegas? Great. I feel great. Excited for the next game. I can imagine so. And it happens tomorrow night against Fresno State. We'll get to that in just a moment. But as you look back on what BYU has done on the 6-0 start, and you've been around the program for a long time. Coach Pope's talked about just how hard it is to go through growing pains and frustrations. You dealt with that last year. You've overcome it, and now it's paying off. What's the biggest difference between last year's team this time of year and where the team is on November 30th of this year? Right. Um, I'd probably say experience. Um, just playing together for a year, getting to know each other, um, not only on the court but off the court. Uh, I feel like everybody has a great relationship, and it shows on the court. Um, I feel like... Some guys didn't gel as well last year as they do this year, but I feel like everybody's super connected and it's showing. So, I loved a couple. I mean, I loved a lot of things about what you and your teammates did specifically in Las Vegas, but there was a, a sequence where you're defending, you tap the ball, you steal it, you run down the floor, and you dunk, and you let the emotion out. You know what? <laughs> Coach, I know that the technical foul is never an ideal scenario, but I was like, I'm totally okay with that. I, I'm totally okay with that. Walk us through that sequence. Um, I mean, it was late shot clock. I anticipated that he was going to shoot the ball, and I have long arms, so I blocked it. And then, like you said, just had to let some emotion out. Um, there's a lot of chatter going on during the game, so just had to make sure that I let him know. How do you navigate that, Coach? I mean, are we, on, are we live? Are we live? <laughs> Nobody's here. <laughs> uh, I love when our guys have emotion. I, I, I love it. I love when Jack shows emotion. I think the whole team gets excited when Jack has emotion. And um, I'd, like to, I'd like to push right up to the limit and then save the free throws. Um, but, you know, Jack's made an unbelievable play. Uh, the best part of the play was? Uh, the block. Which part about the block? Not fouling? Yes, no. yes. That was the best part of the play. And then it was just it was just a big-time play and a big-time finish and big-time emotion. And, and, and listen, this is an emotional game. It's an emotional game. And, and um, so sometimes if, if, we, if we go a little bit over the limit in a, in a non, 
uh, confrontational way. Uh, sometimes that's going to happen, but but you know we're pushing the limit the best we can. I was I'm really proud of the way Jack's played all weekend. Just claim that you were yelling into the oblivion, and the player happened to right. be in your face. That's exactly what happened. <laughs> the, one, of, one of the things yeah, these guys are doing. This, Jack's talked about um, the players being so so much more tight knit. Just today in practice, today's just a we just do a. I mean, it's it's really longer than 40 minutes, but we just eventually get to 40 minutes on the right. clock. <laughs> and, you know, we're doing a drill today and Jax hits a three and kind of falls over uh, as he makes the shot and Dallin races over, Jack's laying on the floor and, and uh, you know, Dallin starts to do heart compressions on him just as he's, you know, and it, that's in practice, right? That's just the way these guys communicate and, and the relationship they have and the energy they're bringing. Certainly Jax is bringing a ton of energy to his teammates also, which is cool. I know you want to stay even keel and and you are that guy. You're the leader in, in, in that regard in many ways is just, just your steady approach. But this team, not surprisingly, has kind of taken the nation by storm. You're a top 20 team. We're not even into December. So how do you handle the, I guess, early notoriety that BYU basketball has right now? Um, just knowing that this isn't like the end goal for us. Uh, we have a lot that we want to accomplish, and this is only the start. Um, I feel like Coach does a great job of – making sure that we do stay focused even when um, you know we have the ranking we have the people looking at us um, just making sure that we're like you said even keel coach on november 30th as a top 20 team in america and the metrics look great ken pomeroy all of that good stuff really likes byu basketball right now so how do you i guess appreciate that but not let it get to your players heads I think the thing we want to focus on is why we're successful. So what happens, like human nature, winning is distracting and losing is distracting and the season is distracting, everything's distracting. And, and, and I do think that we're built in a way where we might have an advantage over just about every other team in the country in terms of our guys being able to stay focused on the things that are bringing them success and, um, and not getting distracted and kind of chasing something else. And um, that's what we're working on. And, and listen, we're, you know, we're going to have, you know, right now we're having an unbelievable run and there's going to be some hiccups during the course of the season. It just is, that's the nature of the season. And, um, but, but if we can stay focused on things that are making us successful, I, I mean, I'll use Jax as an example because he's here. So, um, you know, we, uh, 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 10 days ago, we had, we're doing a smash drill, which do, it doesn't matter what it is, but it's just guarding an action. And Jack's had a little bit of frustration guarding the action, right? And so the last two days in practice, we've run that back because it's something that Fresno State does a lot. And Jack has been so dialed in and so energetic and so aggressive and like it's been no issue, right? Mm -hmm. And that's the type of stuff where if our guys stay focused on the stuff that the, 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 the building blocks of being really good, all the other stuff just finds itself into the game, right? And um, I, I think we can be successful. I think our guys are built that way that where they can stay pretty focused. You agree with that? Of course. Thank Let's you. go. That's a good answer for your coach, by <laughs> the way. Now, I, I do want to put you in a position where maybe you don't get to do this very often, Jackson, and that is I'd like you to, I guess, break down some film of Coach Pope recently from something that happened in Las Vegas. And this is because the national media went nuts, Coach, when they Two saw box. you do this. Okay? Here we go. <laughs> they saw you do this. A box out by Coach Pope. And everyone's like, this is, this is amazing footwork. This is an amazing job by <laughs> Coach DeSeba. How would you rate his footwork in the box out? Well, I just want to say to start out, I mean, the sprint to the box out was just amazing. <laughs> Foose um, is not the only one that pulled the hamstring. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, I feel like he definitely could have got lower. I feel like he was a little too tall. But, hey. It was great. <laughs> I'm probably going to have my wrist slapped later. For this. <laughs> but that's great. You don't get to do that very often. He gets right. to critique you. But, hey, I, I appreciate that insight right there. Coach, do you feel like it's fair? Fair assessment of that effort? I think that's really actually very, very insightful, actually. <laughs> very, very well done. Future coach, maybe. Let's go. Someday. Come on. All right, great stuff. We're, hey, we're just getting started, so stick around, please, Jackson, because we've got to get into the sneakers. And, by the way, you're rocking some sweet kicks. Okay? <laughs> I love this. So we'll, we'll ask you exactly what you're wearing tonight and have a little game show prepared up next again we find out just how well jackson knows his high-end sneakers when byu basketball with mark pope continues <laughs> byu basketball with mark pope is presented by siegfried and jensen 
helping Utah families for over 30 years. OctoHealth. Decode your DNA, design your destiny. And Ken Garth. We hear you. This is BYU Basketball with Mark Hope. Presented by Siegfried and Jensen, helping Utah families for over 30 years. Now let's roll out our game show feature of the night. We're calling it Sneakerhead Showdown. And frankly, it's our version of sorts of the prices, right? So Jackson, you may recognize some of the following shoes. But before we, we get into this and the details of what's going to happen, I need to ask you what you're rocking tonight. What, what do you got on your feet tonight? Uh, some Travis Scott Air Max. OK. And the highlight, like what, what, what color of yellow is that? It's not highlight That's a great question. I don't even know, to be honest. OK. It's so exclusive. There is no official color. <laughs> <laughs> okay, for this game, we're going to show you on the screen a special sneaker. You're going to write down what you think is the current average resale value of that mm. shoe, but without going over mm, the price. Price is right. Let's okay, go. that's the price is right factor there. Whoever's the closest to our number will get a point. And for your information, we have taken our prices from an average list on stock X and GOAT. So there's been like some real comparison here. Okay. A size 11 and a half shoe. Sneaker heads will know what that means, okay? Let's, let's get this started. And then, and then Hema said that the winner gets any StockX shoe they want. Is that right? Any <laughs> shoe on StockX? <laughs> okay, here we go. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> Apparently I'm paying for this. We gotta work, we gotta run this through compliance and all that stuff. Yeah, we'll see. Oh, we'll hey, make it work. They fixed it. Okay. Can, can, we, can we talk about this for a second? Do we please, have time? Please. So listen, is this your first time doing the show this year? With you, yes. Not with Coach Tiger, but with you, so yes. So this is Spencer's first time doing the show, right? So this just to give you a sense, we if you, I don't know if you could show the studio, but it's an unbelievable studio. The the blue lights and the are incredible, right? right? It's yes. New. We have three like two million dollar cameras each, right? Teleprompter. And they each have a teleprompter and then a video board where you can see ourselves. So, Hema, I'm sure Greg was behind this. So the middle <laughs> teleprompter, everything is upside down. <laughs> so Spence, every time he goes middle, he's had to transcribe this upside down and hasn't missed a beat, man. That's impressive. Let's go. <laughs> that is impressive. Gravity quotient, coach. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, number one here. I appreciate this. This is, uh, by the way, this is me and the studio audience versus Jax. Okay, so you guys can help me. That's okay. crazy. All right. The first shoe okay. is the Kobe 6 Reverse Grinch. What is the average price, size 11 and a half, on StockX and GOAT? Can we see a, Do we have a picture? We don't have a picture. We've got it's, it. We're rolling it out. We're just, we're just uh, getting you fully ready. There we go. There is the reverse Grinch. All right. Help me, help me, help me. <laughs> Come on. I know I got a shoe head out here. <laughs> you can't Google on your phones. <laughs> no getting on the StockX app or the GOAT app. Jackson's already ready. Okay, coach, we roll on. Okay, again, closest without going over. Oh, you over. looked at my J. Closest no, no, no. without going over. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> And the reveal is it's the reverse Grinch, so it's got to be pricey. Okay, the reveal is right now six hundred sixty-six dollars. Oh. oh, just over, Coach Pope. Jax is the winner. He said five hundred dollars. What did you say the first time? I said five hundred. Oh, you did. Okay, fair yeah. enough. Fair yeah. enough. Fair so enough. Jax right. gets Too a point there. Very well oh, done. Okay. Well. Sneakerhead with the point. All right, number two, oh, the sweet. Jordan Three. We're into the Jays realm. J Balvin. What do you got as the average price on StockX and GOAT? Okay, so we're gonna have you show your whiteboards once you've got the number. Don't wait, wait, is that wrong? <laughs> People are laughing at Coach Pope's number. Jack says 250, Coach Pope with 150. That's too cheap, Coach. And the, re <laughs> the reveal two, is. 249. This is a, apparently, this is a hot commodity right now. No. 485. What? Oh, wow. 485. That's crazy. Never doubt the power of Michael Jordan, man. What Jackson takes doing? the point, though. He's closer without going over. Okay, uh -oh, should we start coach? now? 45. Let's start. So, dude, <laughs> you spotted Jackson's two point <laughs> lead. Here we go. Number three, Air Force One Low. Jackie Robinson. Ooh. Oh, these are nice. These are nice Check shoes. Okay. It's Jackie Robinson. Like, is limited edition Jackie Robinson? <laughs> yes. Uh. Again, not, I can't, I'm not even going to give you hints, okay? I'm not even going to give you any hints here. You tell me. Okay, reveal your board. 
I'm, I'm dating got? myself. Okay. I'm dating myself okay. right now. Coach Polk goes with 199. <laughs> 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 That's a classic <laughs> veteran move. <laughs> One dollar over. And the price is $294. Oh, let's go. Oh, geez, I'm getting scummed right now. <laughs> That's funny. Very funny. Okay. Classic. Jordan 1, but the Marvel Jordan 1 is our next Ooh. shoe. Okay? What do you got here? It's I'm clean. Be, this I'm is a very, very clean here. shoe. Okay. Let's see if somebody laughs at this. <laughs> Wait, why are you laughing? Fifteen hundred dollars. That's crazy, coach. <laughs> it's the Marvel version. Jax, Jax goes with 310. What do we got? Let's reveal the price. 273, uh, you're both over. No points on the that one. And just so you know, Leanne does not allow me to do any shopping. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was ambitious, to say the where least. Is, where is CT when I need it? <laughs> okay, number CT. five. I love this shoe. This is one of my favorite shoes ever constructed. The Jordan 11, classic look. This is the Concord. You have the white with the black patent leather, that light blue bottom. This is the 2018 release specifically, because again, there are multiple releases. This is the 2018 release. What do you got? <laughs> We're All right, Coach Pope, $700. No, no laughing. There was no laughing. Jax goes with 450. Come on, 701. Here we go. Show us the price. And it's 516. <laughs> Jack's within $66 of that. What is that, 3 0? 3 0. That's 4 0, I think now. 4 4 0. Come on, coach. Now the drama I am in is full will, right will now. Coach Pope <laughs> score a point tonight? <laughs> shoe number next six. Shoe, you guys know the next shoe is worth five points. Here we go. <laughs> wow. Five okay. points on the line right here. Shoe six. This is a woo, limited edition, to say the least. Off white Air Force One, low lemonade. For all of the sneaker heads, so so you guys know, I know low all lemonade. about off white. There's no way this is less than a thousand dollars. Jack's okay. Jack's got big number. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Mark was giving it back. One dollar more. A thousand five points, five five points on the line right here. Thousand dollars for Jack's. Come on, one thousand. And the price is. You got it. Thirteen eighty-eight. <laughs> <laughs> Coach Pope on the board. <laughs> He's on the board. All right. So I didn't know what Off White was until like a year ago. Leanne dragged me into an Off White store, and I'm like, I don't get it. She's like, Oh, these are really expensive. And okay. I was like, Yes, okay. they are. <laughs> uh, apparently, that's a thing, right? The Off White. Okay, shoe number seven. The Dunk Low SB Mummy. I love that Jack's just like, Oh yeah, I know that shoe. I know it well. You know it. He knows them all. This is crazy. All right, gosh. <laughs> A whopping $75 guess. Don't put 76. 75? Don't you put 76. Go with your 400. You had 400. <laughs> All right. Jack says $300. 300 safe. Come on, t Size 11 and a half, average from Goat and StockX, and shoe number seven. The price is $732. Oh, my gosh. That Ooh. is pricey. Plus they're white too. You get those dirty one time. Ugh. Yeah, that's my, that's my thing, Jax. Do you wear these? Like if you buy a shoe like that and you're thinking, do you feel comfortable wearing something that you spend a thousand bucks on? Um, I can't say I spent a thousand dollars on <laughs> yeah, a okay. shoe. Yeah, okay, fair. <laughs> but fair. Um, I'd probably say yeah. I mean, I'd want to show it off if I bought the you'd shoe. Want, you'd want to rock it. Right. Okay. Have you guys, anybody seen images of the new locker room? Which is so fire. If you have seen it, you know that we have a showcase in each locker. And so the guy's jersey for the next game is hanging there the whole time and prep for the game. And below the jersey, they have two bottom lit uh, pedestals for their show shoes. What are your show shoes? Uh, KD 16s. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. And if you could choose any shoe in the world, no price, would you do the KD 16s? What would you do? I don't know what I would do, but I don't think it'd be that. Okay. It'd be right. something different. Okay. All right. Yeah. Jax needs at least that. a night to think about. That's a yeah. very, that's very a hard deep decision. question. Yeah, that is. That's a big that, question. That's a deep question <laughs> and a fair answer. Okay, we got a few more. Three more to go, okay? We've got 10 shoes. The number eight shoe, the 2019 Jordan 4 Bread. 
You guarded Michael Jordan, coach. <laughs> Not successfully. <laughs> <laughs> Not successfully. Okay. 450. Jax goes 500. Ooh, okay. Ooh is this, right is in, this the in the realm? Here we go. Jordan 4 bread 2019. And the final price is 690. Oof. That is such a clean shoe. Love that. Okay, so Jax. Uh, if we're giving Coach we five up, right? points, five points for that <laughs> one answer. Five, five. We're tied at five of these. It's making rules <laughs> up as we go. By who? I don't know who's doing sure. the accounting here. <laughs> I mean, the, the show is named after you, Coach, so apparently you can do whatever you want. <laughs> okay. Shoe number nine, Air Yeezy 2. Okay, this Red is, this October. This is what I want to do right now, okay? So we got these beautiful Travis Scotts. Mm -hmm. Jack's feeling super confident right now because he's crushing me. Let's start at zero for the last two shoes. If I win, I get the Travis Scott <laughs> to put in my show locker. <laughs> if you win, all right, all right, that's fine. If you win, you could have these babies. These are Nike <laughs> Pegasus? running shoes. <laughs> you got a Pegasus there? Limited like that? edition. Yeah. All right, okay. here we go. Let's go. All right. All right. Air Yeezy 2 Red October, Coach. What do you got? Oh, this is this is next level. Okay, nineteen hundred from Coach. Seventy five hundred dollars oh, from Jax. Wow, you you you're too size eleven and a half. Know this. <laughs> what do the Goat app and StockX say? Thirty thousand dollars. I didn't know it was that much. That's a lot of money. <laughs> Thirty thousand two hundred forty five dollars. Thirty thousand. <laughs> it's a wow. car. It's a nice car. <laughs> Wow, Jax, you rock you, you buy you rocking those if you buy them? No. No, okay, no. That's, a, that's a display case no. shoe. Yeah. If you put those in your showcase, your show shoes, we'd have to get a lock on there. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, Jax, you, you get the point. Okay, so you can only tie now, coach, with these right, modified rules. I get as we one continue of the to Travis Scott. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Number ten, the Jordan One Low <clears throat> Voodoo. Unique. Unique shoe here. There is no way that is worth thirty thousand dollars. <laughs> Come on, help me, somebody over here. I know you got a bunch of shoe heads over here. You said fifty. Twenty million. Said, <laughs> some, million. Some, some, some <laughs> it is my recommendation you don't take suggestions from the audience, Coach. <laughs> okay. I feel Final very shoe here. Confident on this. Final shoe. I'm pretty sure that's exactly right. Coach says 483. Jack says 199. Jax, if this is less than 400, dollars I'm gonna be super impressed. Jordan One Low Voodoo. The price is currently 611. Ah. <laughs> Which is your height? <laughs> <laughs> I know my aren't shoes. You, you? <laughs> I know my shoes. <laughs> All right, uh, Jackson really wins, but in Coach Pope's <laughs> fantasy land, he right. somehow tied. Well, somehow. <laughs> that was fun. We appreciate you guys uh, being good sports about that. Okay, we're not done yet. We are coming back with more Coach Pope and Jackson, and your apparently, this is what's written in the prompter. I didn't write this part. Your deepest, darkest social media questions. Are you, are you ready for this yes. onslaught? We're going straight to the dark web. Let's get to it. When? BYU Basketball with Mark Pope continues. Well done. That was fun. <laughs> Welcome back to BYU Basketball with Mark Pope. We are live in Studio C, and now we head to social media for our first Q&A segment of the Coaches Show season presented by Ken Garf. We hear you. This one submitted from at David Photo on X who asks, Jackson, is there a team that you're most excited to play on the mm, schedule? Nice. Um, probably Oklahoma, just because it's home. It's, it, you're from Ada. Right. It's probably about like an hour away, so everybody's probably going to be there from back home. So you grow up in the shadows of OU, and now you're at BYU, and then the Big 12 transition happens. What has that been like for you as you've kind of experienced this transition into the Big 12, knowing I'm going to play in front of all of my friends and family? Right. Uh, it's exciting thinking about it, but, I mean, we're still a couple of games away from conference, so that's what I'm focused on right now. For sure. Um, but I'm definitely excited for that matchup. That's a good answer, Coach. 
Jackson's right? mom and dad are so awesome, so unbelievable. So they came, they were here in the Marriott Center. Was that their first game in the Marriott Center? Uh, together, yeah. And then, and then they came to Vegas. It's actually really cool. So uh, Jax is playing so well right now. I'm trying to get him to come out of every single game. <laughs> let's keep that hey, rolling. Hey, whatever works. Let's, get, let's keep the good karma rolling with the Robinsons in the house. Okay, question number two from at Minty Buck. I love Twitter handles so much, or X handles. Jackson, who's your favorite teammate and why? Oh, <laughs> no pressure. Uh, that's a tough question. It's okay because the boys are watching film right now. So you're, you're, <laughs> safe. you're safe. Nobody's seeing this right now. Um, favorite teammate. Uh, I'm going to probably go with Trev and Nell. Um, I feel like me and Trev got a pretty good connection, strong connection, uh, especially on the court. I feel like we're always talking to each other, keeping each other confident. Um, which is, I feel like, really important for shooters on the court. So, um, but I mean, I love all my teammates. They're all great. So, I don't know if your I least pick. favorite. <laughs> so I can't answer that. <laughs> There's no least favorite. So, uh, great culture going right now. I want to bring up a question that was asked in the audience that I really liked your response to off the air. But let's let's take this on the air because it was so good. Someone asked you, uh, why did you ultimately choose BYU when Who you had so question? many options? What's your name? Hunter. Hunter. Hunter what? Christensen. Hunter Christensen. So from Hunter Christensen, go. why did you pick BYU when you had other options? Um, I would probably say just like the, the family atmosphere. Um, Coach talks about the greatest locker room in America, um, and I completely agree with that. I feel like everybody's well-connected, um, and, I mean, it's been shown on the court um, to start the season. So, yeah. How much did you know about Provo before you actually got to Provo for the first time? <laughs> Truthfully, not much. I didn't know much, but um, I mean, as I've been here for a little over a year. It's been, uh, you know, fun to meet new people um, and just like bond with my teammates. That's 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 not. When I was recruiting Jacks, was the first time we called. He was like, Coach, I have always dreamed of one day. <laughs> <laughs> that's not true. <laughs> <laughs> We, we needed the sneaker swag in Provo. We needed, we needed that. Man. All right, good stuff. Okay, we're not done just yet. For this week's and one trivia question, this is tied into who BYU faces tomorrow night. Who was the leading scorer for BYU basketball the last time the Cougars matched up with Fresno State? Mm. The answer coming up next. Trivia question, which is, who was the leading scorer for BYU basketball the last time the Cougars matched up with Fresno State? And it is J -J -J Jimmer Fredette, 2010, in a 27-point win, 83-56 over the Bulldogs. That was the regular season opener of that magical yeah. Jimmer Fredette season when he was yeah. the Naismith Player of the Year. A mere 20. We're like, oh, only 24. Yeah. That's how good Jimmer, that's yeah. how good he was that year. Yeah. All right, let's get to know the foe. Speaking of Fresno State, presented by Octo Health. Decode your DNA, design your destiny. And a look at founded in 1911, became a teacher's college in 1921. We're going well into the history here. One of 23 campuses of California State University. Alma mater of Clippers forward guard Paul George, who was coached by Steve Cleveland. And uh, hey, Christmas photo op with Victory Bulldog the Fourth on December 9th and 10th. Okay, well, there you go. That's no the Fresno. Coach, as you got, try and get your guys ready for the showdown at the home of the Utah Jazz in the Delta Center, what's the number one concern you have about Fresno's team? A good team. Uh, their front line is massive. Um, they're, you have unbelievable size and athleticism in the front line, and, and their three players in the back quarter uh, shoot the ball incredibly well from beyond the arc. Uh, I don't think I faced a one, two, and three that shoot as well from the free throw line. I think collectively they're uh, around 95% from the free throw line. They're starting one, two, and three. Um, they're a good team. They're coming in here really hungry, uh, just coming off a disappointing loss. Um, so we're going to have all we can handle, and we can't wait to get to it. We'd love to compete. Great stuff. Looking forward to the game tomorrow night, Jackson, as you get back on the floor and try and go 7-0. and Okay, we finish up the show with a segment called What Happened? 
Okay, <laughs> that's right. What happened? Okay. We get Coach Puff's commentary on something that happened recently. And uh, Coach, what do you make of this television graphic? Yeah. So clearly, uh, Trey <laughs> did not know that Spencer Johnson uh, was the oldest player in college basketball, uh -huh. and Trey was a little mesmerized at the gap in NBA earnings that exists right now. <laughs> Almost a hundred million earned by Jason Tatum, and he's yep. six months yep. younger yep. than Spencer. But you know, I talked about this in media today. This Spencer Johnson is really incredible. So not only did he go uh, serve a mission for two years where he was just out paying his own way to serve Amazing. people. Amazing. Which is just incredible. It's almost unthinkable. Wait, don't clap yet. Yeah. Hey, we got to get off the air. I need more time. <laughs> All right, that's great. I'll do it. We'll see you next